Uh, good morning. This little demonstration is about aliasing. That's um, when we sample an analog signal. Uh, we experience a situation where frequencies beyond half the sample rate get folded back and cause problems. So we need to put an anti-aliasing filter into the um, into any such uh, circuit to stop aliasing. What I've got here is a function generator which is set on sine wave at about one kilohertz or one thousand hertz and it's being sampled by this board here. There's a wire going in there. This is an FPGA board but it doesn't have to be an FPGA board can be any digital uh, system that does sampling. It's just convenient for me to use this particular one, which is the FPGA Rio. And over here, the signal is going in, and then I'm reading it into the computer like an oscilloscope. Very much like an oscilloscope in that I can trigger the waveform even. So it's like a PC oscilloscope almost. I can zoom in on it as well and do various things like you would if you were examining the signal. So at the moment the sample rate is here is set at 20 kilohertz. And what I'm going to do is vary the signal frequency. And the frequency is shown here at the top with the spectrum analyzer. I'm taking an FFT in real time and we see this spike which is, uh, you can look at the scale that's showing a thousand hertz. There it is, a thousand hertz which is one kilohertz. And because I'm sampling at 20 kilohertz this means that the maximum frequency achievable uh, should be half of that which is 10 kilohertz. So 10 kilohertz is a bit like the biggest frequency you can ever get in this system. If I sampled at 20 megahertz, then of course it would be 10 megahertz, but in this case it's 20 kilohertz, and uh, I've got 10 kilohertz as the maximum frequency. Now let's change this control here of the sine wave and move it up, and you can see the spectrum of course is moving up along with the sine wave, no problem. And right at the end here is 10 kilohertz, which is where we should be able to get problems and there you can see the aliasing happening a strange looking waveform at half sampling which is a bit like a double sideband suppressed carrier waveform it's actually some of two sine waves I think happening something like that's happening there and then as I go beyond I'm going to go beyond half sampling you notice how it bounces back I'll go up again it's, do it on a precision scale there it goes so it's folding back and as I increase the frequency it goes down and down and down until it looks down here I've got a perfect sine wave again it looks like uh, let's see it looks like one kilohertz again doesn't it but let's look at the oscillator the function generator and we see it's actually uh, 19, 18.9, it's 19 kilohertz because that frequency has been folded back. We can keep going and we'll see that it bounces back down from there and it keeps going up and then it should reflect back again, there it goes and it keeps going back and forward almost indefinitely until you run out of bandwidth. If I go right back down again you see it running all the different folded frequencies and this is why we must have a filter set well not at half sampling but before half sampling so that there's attenuation of everything above half sampling so that it doesn't get uh, uh, folded back when I say everything I, of course I don't mean absolutely everything but if you can uh, if you're doing really well if you can get the get the attenuation below the level of the quantization noise 
That way, virtually everything that uh, matters is attenuated. Practically, we may not be able to do this, and we'll end up with some aliasing, um, depending on how good your anti-aliasing filter in is. So once again, uh, this uh, system has got no anti-aliasing filter, and it beautifully illustrates aliasing. Here it is again, up I go, hit half sampling there, and then it comes back again. And it looks as if we've got a frequency which we don't actually have in practice. There it is. Thank you very much.